Okay, we are going live. Hello everyone and welcome on Archie Diaries with our interview live interview series Reflections on Architecture and Design. I'm really glad to share I'm really glad to share that today for the interview we have the architect Katsushi Koto director of the design and research from Square Works in Mumbai and uh, I, we also have a guest panelist with us professor Sachin Soni he is from faculty of architecture sept university i would like to welcome you both uh, on akidari's uh, goto and sachin thank you for joining thanks anand thank so, you yeah so uh, uh, we let please allow me to introduce uh, please allow me to introduce uh, goto and sachin both and uh, then i would uh, request uh, go to to make his presentation and once the he has made his presentation we can generate an interesting discussion on the basis of the presentation that goto is going to make so katsushi goto is a practicing architect based in mumbai and tokyo the director of design and research from square works in mumbai recently completed project #shevan southlands has been nominated for inside award world architecture festival 2018 and design award 2018 for residential interiors he studied at housing and urbanism architectural association london his current research focuses on the domesticity associated with the materiality of ideal family home and the intersection of politics of public domain and interior urbanism he served as senior assistant professor at meiji university tokyo to program and coordinate international workshops with seven institutions within southeast asia he is a studio tutor bachelor of urban design faculty of planning sept university ahmedabad india and he is also founding member of square square works lab S sqw lab which is a research fellowship program in mumbai for cultural practitioners from all over the world uh, i would request uh, ashna to introduce professor sachin soni as well hi good afternoon everyone so uh, sachin soni is an associate professor of architecture at sept university and he has taught at sept and nid as a visiting faculty as well as practiced as an architect for 3 years um and uh, before he joined as a full time faculty in 2008 since then he has been involved in teaching architecture and urban design studios history and theory of architecture and visual studies with an emphasis on conceptualizing and development of design language currently he is also program coordinator of undergraduate program at faculty of architecture so uh, i think we can uh, start with mr goto's uh, presentation and uh, i'm very excited to see uh, over to you goto okay thank you so much uh, i as an ashna uh, so shall i share my screen yes please okay so i will just um, briefly um, go through how i came to even to india um, uh, i started working at um karan grover's office uh, in 2003 in baroda after i graduated from the um, bachelor's program in meiji university and after that i went to i so i worked with karan grover for about 8 years and they moved to uh, london for the my masters and uh, after that is kind of how uh, i as explained to uh, introduce to me to everyone so now i'm currently um um the uh, director and principal architect of square works in mumbai and 
founding member of the Squareworks Laboratory, we call it uh, SQW Lab. So today, um, I would like to kind of share the, my thoughts on mainly two things. Um, the one is that it's um, also today's uh, counterpart that uh, who is going to interview me, Sachin Soni's uh, full-time uh, faculty at SEPT. So I thought this might be a more interesting to kind of uh, emphasize, emphasize. So um, architecture education and uh, what kind of holds the architectural knowledge and then expertise. Um, I fo usually focusing on the um, drawing as a kind of form of uh, knowledge in architecture. And the secondary, uh, and of course, of practicing actively. Therefore, that it's the, how to embed the research aspect into the design practice. So that's the two, two things that I'd like to discuss today. Um, so it's kind of interesting things that it's, uh, was emerged during the AA's uh, one of the symposium at uh, what is PhD and by, by design. Um, the many uh, architecture school today that it's uh, offering the PhD, doing a PhD, not written PhD, but it's emerging the uh, design activity for the uh, acquiring the PhD uh, doctor degree. And that there's an interesting thing that it's traditionally masters and doctors in let's say 18th century has no distinction and its only difference was that it's doctor teaches and the master doesn't. And then another thing this is interesting that it's probably also uh, remind us that it's the research act is embedded in the design is that the design as Latin word and then it's, as a, the Italian word disegno is about the uh, kind of searching for um, something to uh, capacity to uh, invent and then design new things. And it, within that one, in this description, the drawing and then the ability to research to the drawing is kind of embedded. Um, what I also would like to uh, share with you that uh, I'm not uh, taking a position of the formal education and the, the way that its uh, portfolio and then outcomes are presented is not um, kind of, I'm not criticizing those. It, those are the very useful uh, as I was involved in the uh, activity in Tokyo, uh, university in Tokyo, which is Meiji University. They have a, uh, only master program in Japan taught in English. And they also getting the international accreditation from the Canberra Accord. Um, so in order to kind of have those um, accreditation system and then uh, acknowledged and the register to those uh, international board, you need to obviously structure the, um, the program. It was the course is structured around the studio. So most of the uh, the courses in uh, India for the architecture and urban design also remain the same. And the way in uh, accreditation systems usually taking place is that it's, you present the outcome like this. So that it's the, from the first year to uh, fourth year in, in Japan's case, it's a bachelor's program is four year, uh, but it's, the four year plus two years of master put together six years is recognized as a professional course. And then the, it is getting acquisition from the uh, international board. And usually this is a form of the uh, process of this acquisition system. And my question is that, um, the, is that this kind of concrete images of the architectural proposal actually holds the knowledge or not. It might be more kind of intuitive sketches and a discursive drawing may have an impact with more um, that drives our activity of the design as the Italian word, the design kind of you know, uh, suggests. 
So I was in, uh, involved in the um, mainly the international program for the Meiji University, partnering with seven universities in Southeast Asia. So, and the program was um, the funded by the Japanese government. And we had the four years of workshop, but unfortunately that the last 2020 was because of Corona, we couldn't do it, but it, that was kind of um, planned in the in initial stage. And in the uh, short term workshop, we actually focused on not to produce the concrete image like this. So there's less rendering, less um, modeling in computer, but let's try and work with the uh, diagrams and uh, drawings to articulate urban problem within the um, Southeast Asian cities. So we also have this, a few booklets and uh, uh, um, I, I'm happy to share whoever contacts me and uh, it's also on the Facebook, if you can find out that if it's if ASEAN Duality Joint Workshop, you can find the Facebook page as well. And maybe maybe good example of the, how that it's drawings to inform the uh, urban issues. Um, and last week, uh, no, sorry, not yet. Last two semesters, I was also taking the uh, level two studio at SEPT University, and this is um, one of the uh, studio introduction is also available at the uh, um, SEPT University's, uh, I think, uh, the studio catalog that, that kind of explains the uh, wide ranges of the studio that they offer. So in this studio, the uh, subject matter is the, the another thing is that it's, uh, I'm interested in, other than this kind of methodological concern, over the architectural practice and then design. But I'm, as a subject matter, I'm interested in the uh, domestic space, domest domesticity, which is emerged from during the mid 19th century and, and, and it's more become instrumental during the uh, modernization in the beginning of 20th century. And the, the way we know the, our life and the family and how we live in urban is still, I think it's uh, dominantly the, dominated by the idea that it's conceived during the like mid 19th century. That's a kind of my starting point of the, um, the having an interest in a domestic space and domesticity. Um, in the studio, I was kind of, um, instead of traditional way of um, documenting the own space, that they're having the constraint of cannot go out because of during the COVID. So we started to investigate the individual space by using the photogrammetry technique. And from there that it's we kind of taking the drawing and then did the quite a, a detailed observation of the spaces that it's inhabited by the one person. So that was a kind of studio. And then the, during the studio, we had a many discussion about the notion of living alone and taking, scaling up to the thinking about new way of uh, living as a as form of multiple dwelling, multi, multiple uh, unit housing. So that was a studio. And then we try and then use again, diagram and then, um, drawing to investigate the material organization and the spatial organization of the housing and the single uh, dwelling unit. It's kind of um, the another thing is that it's, um, I, I'm kind of uh, jumping around uh, the topic, but uh, in this, the with especially within the domestic scenario, I'm interested in the, um, the act of cooking and the dining. The, the, these, the, there's a two reasons that, that I'm interested in, in these two particular uh, things, the cooking and then, or kitchen as a 
if we name it as a place of the cooking, kitchen and the dining is that, uh, uh, later I will explain another this research project, but I think these are the two things that have become very instrumental uh, as um, uh, important as part of the planning of the housing because the women of the house started kind of getting their own um, position, changing its own position uh, within the family setting. And they are the primary responsible person for the well-being of the family who comes back from the uh, outside, back all day working, come home, and they also need to eat. And therefore, that it's, um, it's um, very um, interesting in terms of transformation happen uh, from the uh, pre-modern uh, period to the shift towards modern period. So I, I try and articulate this one um, again in the research that it's, I'm doing. And uh, my research is about uh, Mumbai Art Deco apartment. So as you know, Mumbai was uh, the seven islands and the, the land is the uh, it's uh, filled and the different land that its entire city is standing. Most of the city is standing. And it started uh, in the 19th century from the port that it's owned by uh, British East India Company. And that's uh, the when the, uh, the Mumbai Art Deco building was started built after um, going when after went through the pandemic of the and at that time it's epidemic of the uh, plague in uh, in the end of 19th century 1990 uh, sorry 1897 and in response to that this uh, improvement trust was made and the land reclamation was extended and then what is you can see on the top part was this uh, more like an open block more airy um, Art Deco building, as opposed to the Victorian, the Neo Gothic uh, style of the architecture, which is, uh, go, you know, uh, creating the fabric, all the parts of the, the um, fabric, in especially fort and uh, that area in Bombay. So that's a kind of background that's kind of looking through the fort, Honiman, currently we, what we know as a Honiman cycle towards. Church Gate Station. Church Gate Station is still not yet um, built. And that was the, the, uh, the from the Marine Drive side, looking all over, over the oval and then seeing the um, all the fabric. So I'm kind of interested in the transformation from this, uh, the older regime to the more like a the city making was driven by the citizen. The, the reason I'm saying so is that it's this uh, Mumbai uh, Art Deco apartment block was kind of more um, promoted by the cities of architects involved in the Indian East Institute of Architects. And then they had the exhibition, seminar ex exhibition, the in ideal home exhibition. 1937, and then also that it's promoted by the um, the engineer and architect of that time to build with the um, RC construction to provide what we also still today saying Pakka housing, as opposed to uh, Kacha housing of the um, the in most of the Indian village has. So, and that's quite interesting thing. So that we can also find this. The engineer, the Spande, is uh, interpreting the modernist housing, modernist architect, Bruno Taut's project appropriated to Indian context. So what is on the left is uh, the appropriated by the Spande, and what is on the right is the original. Um, and in his description that this house is, the Bruno Taut is made for the uh, one family. But it's in his description, this is suitable for 
the two, two multiple family of the seven eight people. So that's kind of interesting that it's an interpretation and the emphasis on the veranda and the outside space also quite a um, very local point of view and then and the good adaptation and then we, that we can learn from that one too. And then uh, this kind of uh, posters and the catalogs was at, at that time uh, used. And then here's a, something that it's what I started interested in is that it's these women that it's also, um, she's not looking at the blueprint of the house that it's going to be built, but it's kind of uh, sitting beside the, the, the husband to become part of, and that these are the kind of advertisement of the, at that time to um, promote more goods, and kind of uh, raise the oh, kind of um, what's the word? Um, improve the quality of life by promoting these uh, new gadgets in the kitchen, and and then also at the same time that it's um, this kind of cook recipe book from the even recipe book that it's the shift of the 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 dining style can be read and the arrangement of the kitchen or mostly that is this the new cookware is used by the wife that the wife of the, the household but it's maids and then all the helper would use still old one maybe cooking on the floor or using a different uh, cookware so that's uh, um, what we could learn from this shift. In fact, this, uh, this recipe book on the left was older version, and then uh, in the 70s, that it's the same recipe book. So recipe inside the recipe is the same, but it's the way it is represented, the kind of images of the family is kind of changed. So it's kind of dining areas now become part of the kitchen. So you could not like a kitchen is separated from the dining, but it's now cook and then eat together. Um, in my research, so therefore that it's we um, doing the uh, relationship between the dining area and the kitchen and the the organization of the uh, the art deco housing. So number one and two is in fact it's a small art deco building in uh, Dadar and then Hindu Parsi, uh, Dadar's Parsi and Hindu colonies. So it's quite smaller, but it, you can see the um, corridor was kind of introduced at that time to more uh, use the spaces in a segregated manner. As opposed to that one, uh, numbers three and then four is um, built the beginning of 20th century, before the Al Deco building in 30s, that its people started the building, there's no corridor. So there's a, um, the organization was room to room, and then it's not separated to the activity. And the number five to nine, uh, except, uh, sorry, number six is in Wadi, and then five, seven, eight, nine is in the South Bombay, on the Marine Drive or Oval or the further down. So all of them has a clear distinction of the service entrance to the kitchen and the rather long corridor to connect the, um, the dining area where that it's masters and then of the house actually sits and then eat or maybe entertain the guest. So this research is still ongoing and hopefully sometime later that it's, I could also have uh, time to um, share the uh, idea. And this kind of research, I and mean, in fact, it's like a chronological research actually started later than this project that it's, I'm going to show. Um, but the concern about domesticity and uh, the how that intimate family was become important and idealized 
during the process of modernization led to think about is really that it's intimate um, family structure is the one that that we think that it's idea you know um, ideal for the family what i mean in, the, in intimate is that it's in in short that it's, you have a parents and you have a kid and then obviously parents love each other and uh, kids also kind of grow you know raised with the lots of love and affection of the parents therefore that its kids become uh, the healthy and the mentally not disturbed and, and able to engage able to partake the social activity and um, so we architects tend to kind of serve those people who are happy because my even my private clients all of them are quite happy and then thinking about the within the, their life stage when to build the house when they come to that come to us and then ask the to want to build the house that means that it's they probably that it's had already a kid or planning to have a kid the kid is also not too small now so that it's you know we can think about the house long term so we kind of always think about this the the house around the ideal uh, family structure and in the discussion of the the within the architects we tend to put developer and then another contractor led project you know distinguishing from us but it's if we all put together even developers project also driven by the this idea of home that that you have happy family and the house market housing is marketed on the basis of uh, that uh, ideal family so i started thinking about the organization that it's family which is not contained within the house but it's more trying to look outside or sometimes try and then think that it's uh less number of people living so that kind of things and the series of uh, uh multiple you know sometimes point time to time i also changes the <laughs> interest and then uh the few project comes up so in, on the left this was the proposal for the pavilion in the courtyard um so this was like a single or a two person unit which is with the wall less but it's um clustered around the small the void of the garden and then everything is facing outside that it's what it's kind of segregated so it's the curtain that it's you know um uh, create the skin of the um uh, private room that it distinguishes the private the area of the two person and the second one is that it's project uh done with uh, artist Vishwasho who is my partner as well and if um de- de- depicting the one person's um uh, life from the 0 to 0 years old to up to 19 18 years old uh through the object and in in the book format and we also did another book format project that that's juxtaposing the um uh, typical um family home could be victorian could be georgian but some of them are modernist housing with the materiality of non typical you know uh typical house uh typical family home materiality so hospital beds to um the water dispenser and the little partition um it's that that's all of them are kind of um talks about this um a little bit of the family or people that it's not fitting with the ideal home but at the same time uh try and investigate kind of um the more like a circulatory space around the around the object that that I have started investigating on the left side project uh left side most uh, pavilion project so this is another um a video that it's um we are doing 
is a pavilion for the the Jeffrey Museum now name changed and then a uh, museum of the home in London. Um, this is open kitchen for the museum together with the uh, wastewater treatment system on the right hand side as a um, the hub garden. But this one also that it's questioning that it's instead of having the formal dining community kitchen and that's a kitchen and the dining space together, um, kind of investigating the non-linear form to uh, accommodate multiple possible uh, combination of the people and then the scale of the uh, engagement amongst the people who comes in. And then also would like to show this uh, notion of the central pool and then opens out in other open that are looking in is a few of the projects that I have done in Tokyo when I was part of the small office in Tokyo. So that's the kind of, this is the ground and the first put, first well put together, it's about 100 square meter project, but we uh, put the core together and uh, the inhabitant or is going around that Area. And this one also one of the apartment uh, renovation project put the core, core together to move around. But usually these these things are um, creating the extra circulate, circulation space. So uh, it's very difficult to persuade this kind of idea. But sometimes it works. And what it changes is that it's uh, it creates a distance within the house as well, not kind of new push it to the center, but it's pushed towards outside. And uh, this is a very pure form of that one, just containing the the bathroom in central core, and then you could really walk around. Um, the another project, this uh, is a competition project uh, organized by PU Delft, one of the research group uh, in the PU Delft. And this was about the, the proposal, research proposal for the, the dining in the urban area uh, in the Eastern European context. So here as well, we kind of accumulating our interest on how we dine, but um, because of this kind of looking in and out, which more to us that it's focusing on not family as a cluster or one unit, but it's more focusing on the uh, singular that's being, being alone. So this is kind of um, the test kind of testing test. We are testing the idea of being alone, but it's together with someone else's. So that how we could um, put Single the people together, but it's without losing that the singularity. Um, you can also share a few of the my build project. This is in uh, uh, South Mumbai, uh, one of the uh, Art Deco building that was really innovated. That was how it was. Um, so um, I would like to talk this project from not from the point of view of um, the, how that the space is used, but let's try and speak the idea of this, the, the perimeter that it's a free, free app. So if you see the plan, there's a, the furniture that it's not attached to the wall, but its furniture is kind of pushed towards the center of the room. Uh, for example, this number three, that's a kitchen, but it's detached from the older walls and put the uh, kitchen in the center of the room. Same, in the same manner, bed, bedroom, the beds are pushed towards center, even the wardrobe are uh, pushed towards center to creating the circulatory space around. And the 
to us backside, this is our service area, but um, this is just because of space constraint, uh, we could have the furniture on the wall as well, but um, so therefore that it's, the work is on the left side is um, the, the storage area that it's kind of creating the, separating the little room and then corridor space. Um, so this, the such organization is kind of supported to the kind of vague idea of the not looking inside, but it's trying to look outside. It's in fact, it's kind of as a um, space, it's created lots of light and ventilation coming into the uh, flat as well. So that is on the left because that it's one doors are open up. So you could see that at one edge is of the uh, flat to the another edge. So there's a, at the, at the result, like a, as a result, there's a lot of uh, light and then air coming into the uh, flat as well. So that's the um, kitchen that this goes around. A few of the pictures. Yeah. And in a similar ma manner, I there's a the wardrobe that is sitting in the bedroom is lifted from the ground. So it's sitting on the concrete ledge. And um, I didn't expect, but it's the, there's a reflection of the light from outside, reflect on the floor, and the um, indirect light coming into the behind the wardrobe was the in, inner side of the building, inner side of the room. That was kind of unexpected and kind of uh, happy about this, like a light quality on the left, especially the what quality of the light that is on the, the left bottom corner. With a few pictures, like fun pictures of working together. Uh, let me also go through uh, one of one another project for the uh, the single uh, person living in uh, outside of Baroda. So um, this is also very similar. Um, in before going to the picture or any uh, concrete plan, the idea was to have the volume inside to represent the the idea of looking outside and then this house originally when we just started design the the four side the older side was wrapped around the veranda obviously but that was too ambitious so size of veranda was kind of uh, chopped off and then getting smaller but this uh, like a wedge shaped wall was built as a mass, mass uh, brick wall uh, structural brick wall and the access was cutting through the those uh, brick wall but otherwise all the rooms are contained was outside of the brick wall to kind of having that having the emphasis on the something heavy something core it's always contained inside and you look outside so you're not protected by the thick wall but the keeping the thick wall the inside. So eventually the, the idea is uh, the plan was settled at least. Um, in this the thick brick wall, we carved the many niches and uh, uh, storage. And even the stake is that as we put going upstairs uh, is uh, in, within the brick wall. So that system that you can see literally that it, there's a masonry wall in the in the uh, center of the house, wrapped around the veranda. So the small small courtyards 
uh, inserted to uh, bring the light to the uh, bathrooms and then wardrobe area as well. There's a few uh, other elements that it's kind of celebrating the project. <laughs> Okay, so um, I would like to kind of return to this idea uh, what we should uh, discuss about the based on the today's presentation. But let me just uh, summarize a little bit of this one. So the Current education in architecture, regardless of the, I think, the geography, is the same only on the left. But the, during the workshop, what we discuss and during the design development, we do do sketches and kind of use the white, still whiteboard to do this. And uh, what on the right hand side that it's uh, try, try and then kind of uh, have a started having the, the relevance of using a technology to kind of uh, visualize or um, acquiring the data from the real life to convert it in the, into the drawing or use it as a uh, material in the design process. So these are the few, uh, again, example of the workshop that I have conducted the last four years. And these are the, just as a reminder that it's used to um, get the uh, accreditation of the international body from the international body, what you, your education. So this kind of assure the quality of the um, architecture education and um, at the, this is, could be a last the content that I would like to introduce and then share. Um, I find it kind of having a limitation on talk about this idea of drawing and how to feed back to the, or how to kind of use the practice of drawing in the design practice because in the daily, uh, work office time, we also um, less of less time and the lack of the people. So we focus on producing the concrete um, idea and show it to grant or give it to the um, contractor. So the four of us, uh, me and my partner Vishwa and uh, Charlie, uh, art curator from London, and uh, Lozana, art writer in living in Netherlands, we four of us put together uh, the the fellowship program in Bombay, and then we are hosting it in uh, our office. So in this, uh, we sorry, just jump. This is the idea of the our the fellowship program. We uh, program the fellowship program. Um, the idea of drawing and then domestic. So we, uh, as a subject matter, we research into domestic space and using the various form of the drawing, even writing could be a kind of considered as a drawing as long as it's not concrete, but it's kind of representing the uh, process, thinking process and then thought process. And then these are the, um, the how we work and the uh, collaborate. And we also do a short um, work, the workshop or short, and you know, we call it play project, short, uh, the team driven uh, play, partner with the artist, like that we make a pair and then produce the uh, work, uh, giving the, uh, the various team. And 
the it's interesting thing is that it's uh, we host it in uh, our uh, office, but it's also it's a live and work space. So how does the space transform from the one one day it's become a uh, our dining space, but it's also it's extended to the uh, space for the presentation. And sorry, go back to the slide, but uh, as a result, we could also able to um, self-publish these little little uh, the booklets and then uh, the gene zine kind of stuff. Uh, as a outcome so yep that's uh my presentation and and then the hope that it's you see the um relevance of this um the like last few pictures of the what we produced in the lab is not the um it doesn't have a quality of the work that it's presented in a gallery or any other place so we call it as an open studio but it's i think there's a many things that it's, we could share because of um this the rawness and the intuitiveness of this uh, work is produced and then the in fact it's the thoughts goes into this one and then discourse and then discussion happened over the single work is quite a uh, interesting uh, things that to notice. So, so that, that's uh, my presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Goto. Uh, I request you to stop sharing the presentation so that we could start yep. the discussion. It was it was really interesting to go through the whole presentation in in many ways, you know, I, I find it to be a continuation of uh, the discussion that we had, I think, a couple of days back on 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 this presentation and a lot of themes. Now, one could see that they are trying to come out of uh, out of this presentation. So one is, of course, the the idea of drawing and that sort of uh, transcends across these various activities that you talked about and there are diverse kinds of activities then uh, there is also the uh, the aspect of the architectural education and uh, that you touched and that's in fact that's what you started with and then finally you came back to that part also and that is one more thing that one can take away and in between, I think you touched upon the uh, uh, one very interesting aspect of how the cities are changing, how the families are changing and how uh, we as architects are sort of used to design for what quote unquote ideal families uh, or what you actually identify them as happy families. So now I think what is that other, you know, because when we talk about the domesticity, there are many kinds of domesticities that that come together and make these kind of larger urban conglomerates, particularly city like Mumbai, as as uh, different scales of of domesticity, if, if we may put it that way. So that was also something that was very interesting to see. And then, of course, in your practice, how how do you sort of uh, bring some of these things and explore them to you know make uh, exploration so i think i would like to invite sachin to to take over from this particular uh, point and maybe he can initiate uh, certain discussions from this point onwards yeah sachin uh, can you hear me yes we can hear you thanks goto for a wonderful presentation uh, i think it is uh, no Again, uh, since I think we have discussed last uh, before a couple of days, I've been looking at your website and been looking at the Facebook uh, uh, pages, and I think more and more you look at it, uh, uh, you know, uh, it becomes more intriguing. Uh, you know? uh, and I think that's where you know, I started taking notes, and you know, I've been filling pages, you know, just as a uh, way to observe. 
I think uh, Ayaz has kind of elaborated upon the major kind of strands which comes out from the from from, from uh, Gozo's presentation. I think what what interests me, you know, and first of all, I think uh, Gozo, uh, and this is something which is very and it would be uh, it is something which is fascinating and it would be something which would be very informative about uh, uh, you know uh, your interest in domesticity. See, the, the the idea of domesticity has always been political. You know? um, the idea, you know, it kind of uh, links with the idea of home. It is uh, to do with intersection of gender and power. You know? uh, so a lot of people talk about power outside. Uh, you no, know? you know? they say that no power lies in monuments. You know? But uh, as Foucault says, you no know, power actually lies in micros at micro scale, and I think in that sense, domestic space is one of the most political space in that sense. You no, know? so um, and and more interestingly, it's it's also an inward gaze. This is something which is uh, also a lot of people talk about it, you know? uh, gazing inward, inside. You know? Domesticity, uh, you know, the idea of domesticity is all about the inward gaze. So, how did you get interested in this uh, theme? Because uh, you know, because I was looking at uh, your work and the lab's work, and uh, somehow this theme kind of runs in a direct or indirect way. I could I could kind of sense this uh, you know, this this continuity across all your projects. You know? So, how did you get interested in this idea of domesticity? Um, the, I think it's, I have a various way of explaining it, but it's what I look at in this situation is that it's, I'm also interested in uh, uh, informal city in a way that it's the like slums and then those who are not privileged and then, uh, how they live. And then for them, families are not sometimes um, safe because uh, for them it's a probably safe places that it might be a school because family that it's, when they come back if they are uh, still 10 years old they might just need to be abused by the parents and then uh, they consider as a part of you know uh, workforce and I hear about so many things and then families are not necessarily always happy <laughs> and then started thinking about what we can do. Not like, a, even it's, what I feel it funny is that it's, we also talk about in a school or studio program that it's thinking about the housing. That's always a concern of the architects and especially in the uh, educational program. Like do, do something good for the in a population, the always architect serves for the population and works for the public good. But what I think missing is that it's there's a very ideal kind of um, fantasizing of those who are poor and then having a very strong social um, structure of themselves. But it's, if you look at it inside, it's actually not. It's the families are falling apart. The kids are not very, um, you know, uh, taking care to do a study or uh, the, their nutrition level also quite bad. So that's a kind of um, the one of the starting point. There's another various reason that it's, I'm interested in the domesticity. And we, I think that it's our life also not very uh, standing on the very... Uh, robust foundation that it's something's happening into our life it's kind of falling apart and what yeah. Mm, yeah. So. Yeah. i think this, this is quite fascinating no? the, 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 uh, you know when when you were uh, discussing about uh you no know, the ideal family and when you're discussing about uh you no know, your own um, work in that sense uh you know, i'm just thinking about you know, what is an ideal family in that sense uh, and um, no, you talked about uh, you no know, something like slum or, or uh, underprivileged uh, uh, family, you know? but I'm also thinking about uh, what is uh, the idea of uh, you no know, uh, domesticity, uh, say for uh, uh, a migrant worker you know, who is staying alone you know, with three of uh, 
uh, you know, uh, his friends uh, in one of the chawls or in one of the uh, pigeon holes in, in Mumbai. You know? Or for that matter, uh, say uh, a single investment banker in central London. You know? What is their idea of the domestic city? Because you know, one of the things which was very interesting, what I found, you in your project, you, know, you, you, you look at you look at two very, very interesting, uh, you know, uh, how do I say, I should not say objects, but say anchor points. You know. One was kitchen, the herd, and this is then something which is quite fascinating, the way I, I kind of, and the other is the wardrobe or the storage. You know. And, you know, if, if I talk about the foundation of what you call home, it is essentially hurt, very cook, and perhaps something where you store you know, uh, your precious belongings. So, how how do you see you know, how do you see the play of these two uh, you know, elements, you know, the kitchen and wardrobe, you know, and and how does it um, uh, it it kind of gives uh, you know, a variety of insights into the domestic. I think there's something which is quite fascinating. You know? uh, also the house uh, which you showed at the last you know, it also kind of gives uh, away this whole, um, how do I say, experimentation with the notion of domesticity. Just using these two elements, I, I found it very, very fascinating. Mm -hmm. um, and perhaps uh, I think uh, you know, that, that, that becomes one of the ways in which, uh, which comes out very strongly in your practice, uh, uh, mm -hmm. no, apart from the research, but the practice actually shows very playful uh, way of um, uh, exploring speciality of uh, a home or a board through a careful um, no, uh, putting or juxtaposition of kitchen and wardrobe. I think this is something which, which I found very, very fascinating. Uh, I'll, I'll just jump to the second second aspect uh, about, about domesticity. And I think this has been something which all of us have been thinking about and it has you know, uh, it has been kind of uh, uh, raging on social media. Um, you know, uh, the, 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 the moment you say domestic, you know, uh, no, it, it, it kind of uh, refers to a private uh, aspect of our life, the private spheres of our life. Both uh, internet uh, uh, through social media uh, and as well as pandemic, no? it has opened up our our private lives to public. That by virtue of you broadcasting this uh, lecture. From your, uh, no, from your no, core of your house or maybe bedroom, no? the bedroom becomes part of the outside world from from, no, from the public. How do you see this? How uh, no? Do you see it is going to change uh, or, or or change the ideas of what you call domesticity? Hmm. Okay, um, let me respond to the, what you said first thing, that it's kitchen and um, wardrobe. I never thought about wardrobe as uh, something that I focus, uh, but the moment you said that it's actually yes, and uh, because I think I shown the, um, the Southland project, which is essentially mm -hmm. for uh, my own home and the studio. Therefore, that that's, I could freely explore the idea of the wardrobe, which is cut around the house, and the play with it. The reason is that that's um, obviously that it's I could take a responsibility of what to store where and <laughs> not confused, and then um, what who will blame is that it's me maybe that by myself and then. <laughs> my partner to bring that so that this cupboard is like a too small this one is like that so i can't put my older clothes in one place but it needs to you know put here and there but it's i think it's it's probably um related to the my answer should be related to, to the what you asked about it's the how domesticity 
going to be because of this um, the private room is open up to the um, public um, so well, to me that it's the domesticity should be kind of understood through the uh, subject of individuals individuals that it's who could uh, could take own decision mm. So if I make the take the wrong decision, it's I no one to blame, but it's I kind of need to face that it's I made the decision, and uh, I think it's like the process of uh, making the house or making making any decision on what to, how you arrange like, your belongings, which is related to the storage, is also important and, and it kind of related. And the most of the people cannot imagine that that's how. They kind of arrange the things, but it's usually, typically, that it's, there's a wardrobe attached to the bedroom, so that we put all the personal belongings there in a particular manner. Where how that it's um, is that okay? Something yeah, I, think, I think yeah. So I'm 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 just trying to kind of uh, um, so few points or mm. or how potential. What would be the potential directions? You know? Mm. Uh, because since you are you, know, you are invested in this idea of progress, this is something which which also um, is something which which all of us you know, uh, think about uh, you know, nowadays. You know. How is it going to change uh, our our, our uh, uh, response to what is public, what is private? So uh, again, you know, as you say that it is upon the in the you know, owners of an individual in that sense. Um, but in that sense, social media is very, very interesting. You know, it, it does allow you to uh, you know, create a private space you know, uh, for itself. Uh, the second part, uh, Goto, I, I, would, I would jump on, and probably I think that might one of be one of the ways in which we can connect back to this idea of domesticity, is this idea of drawing. You know? so I was just reading uh, you know, from, from the website of uh, uh, square Labs uh, and and what you talk about drawing uh, as uh, not only a tool to illustrate but as an exploratory method to question the understanding of speciality, alternate domesticity, and examine the physical cons you know constraints of existing dwelling. Uh, I think this is something which 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 kind of let me think you know, that what is the role of drawing because. Uh, initially, when we started, uh, uh, and uh, um, the first thing which you talked about was this idea of design, the Italian definition of design, which which um, looked at this idea of you know, to draw, but at the same time it was also to do with uh, uh, you know, uh, intellectual, so using the intellectual capacity. So I, I found this you know, drawing as a tool. Uh, you know, nowadays, I think. Um, one of the one of the uh, you know, larger critiques of architectural education, in that sense, is about uh, you know, the the the, you know, the representation, you know? uh, and 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 if you if you actually talk to a lot of uh, practitioners, and you know, uh, me being uh, uh, a teacher, you know, I I usually get to hear. You know, uh, this this guy uh, you know, can make beautiful uh, picture perfect drawings, but uh, I don't know whether they 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 like uh, you know, they can they can think they can use it as a thinking tool. So, what is your opinion on that? What are the ways in which you can make uh, drawing uh, more of a thinking tool? You know, I, I would like you to, I would like you to you no know, I would like to allow I would like you to elaborate upon that, but. No, using one of a uh, very interesting uh, 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 example from your own work, you are in Vishwa's work, which is that uh, book called The Room no? uh, from that uh, SQW. No, there is an element of play over there. Um, I found that very fascinating in that sense. And I thought that if, apart from the conventional ways of Communication, if I say drawing as one of the most you know, uh, 
uh, classic way to kind of think about drawing as a more of communicating to uh, your your colleague, your clients, uh, uh, the, the, the makers, contractors. I thought that sort of playful way uh, to be quite fascinating and uh, you know, sometimes more appropriate. So what are your views on that? Um, so my views on drawing is um, definitely that it's um, something in my head to kind of not necessarily visualize, but let's put it out on a different format so that I can clarif clarify this, what is missing or something goes wrong. That's the uh, basic. And then I have actually same feeling of when I'm writing. Mm. And uh, I feel that it's while writing, I identified what is missing, that it's, I would like to conclude this, like this way, but to reach that one, there's a many missing part. And then un unless I write it, I can't find it. In the same way that that's drawing, unless I draw it, I can't find out the, uh, what is missing or what is a problem. So it's a, literally a uh, process of finding that actually a problem rather than um, making something complete mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or represent. Mm -hmm. It may not represent completely, that's fine. But as long as I can identify the problem or that it's my, identify the, my next action, that kind of, and sometimes those actions is a shared action. So then become a um, discussion. So if it's like multiple people involved, one drawing or one do to clarify what is common understanding and what is not. It's the same way in the writing. So once you write it, you kind of clarify that that's, yes, exactly. That word, we need to kind of keep it. No, 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 no. You, you cannot write it that way, but because it's there's it something different. So not verbally, but it's write it. It's therefore that uh, some of the writing as a, uh, as how it is used in a discussion or uh, in the process of you know uh, making a decision. It's more like a the drawing nature of drawing that writing also have drawing, you know, nature of drawing. So some of like those ones that, that you draw it on the whiteboard in the during the meeting. Mm. The more like that, that kind of things the more than the writing, more it's I feel that it's kind of having a quality of drawing mm, to to clarify. It is it is more uh, about the process of clarification, more mm. of uh, not opening up mm. windows in some ways, uh, no? Uh, almost like uh, you know, doodles or jamboard or mm. you know, in, in that sense. Uh, also, this this uh, you no know, when 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 I look at uh, the square work architects and square work uh, lab, uh, you have been working with uh, you no know, in, in a very interesting, very rich, multidisciplinary environment you know, or, or closely associated with uh, artists, uh, curators, and critic, you no. Know? Uh, Vishwa, Charlie, Rosanna, Tash. You know? um, so, what is uh, what? You no, know, if, if if I have to ask you, you know, what is the role of you no know, being you know, of, of of such a multidisciplinary environment or such a rich visual culture you know, around you on your practice on your architecture practice? Because there is something which which. Which which might be there, which we are not able to see directly, but definitely there is some sort of connection. You know, uh, being in that sort of uh, uh, environment, which which uh, is all about uh, visual culture, which is uh, rich. Uh, um, it's a very difficult question. <laughs> um, uh, I think it's probably uh, my uh, reactionary 
um, things that that um, so I, I see many people in my generation or even, even today as well but it's my many of the, my friends who study the architecture so it's complete the bachelor's and it's even even professional training um, they give up if for some reason but that's they profess that that's no 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 but it's I still using the the thinking process that, that I have learned from the studio is great. And then those one is kind of uh, model within the company or society, any creative field that it's, it's a very, very good model to um, develop the skill. And then also able to present, able to develop all, all of that sort of stuff. So they say that it's, they're not no more designing, but it's be part of those um, the industry. And then obviously that it's those who study the architecture or any other design that it's always wanted to be in that kind of creative industry. So I, I can understand that one, but it's, let's not put it that um, all what you did in the studio helped and then you still hold on to that one. Mm -hmm. Because some of them are uh, still, you know, doing the design as uh, the, their bread and butter and then try and then even um, develop those like a design as a, uh, as a tools to, you know, uh, work on the betterment of the society or like, inventing something new. Mm -hmm. And so therefore that it's, it's easy, even I'm not um, the 100% practicing, practice, practicing the architecture, you could go out and then saying that, that oh, I could um, architectural background that, that I have and then I work with you. So that's kind of already like, you are um, one position that it's that you kind of you know um, whatsoever you kind of differentiate yourself in the group of people but it's, to me it's kind of other way around but because i'm working different fields as you i more want to emphasize on the the idea of architectural design. So in fact, as in my studio, we don't mix up architectural design to the urban design. The planning is a planning. So it sounds kind of, it's, it's a very both sides of point. I really love to um, collaborate, but it's because I collaborate, I will keep myself in very, plan and keep cent center of the architecture, not kind of doing, I do product design and then like that. So it's a kind of the both reflection of myself and then also the how I project. Mm. Mm. It's a very interesting way of putting it mm. in that sense where, mm. you know, and of course, uh, you know, it, is, it is more of, uh, you know, uh, like, uh, no, it's, a, it's a retrospective thought you know, uh, in, in, in some ways. Uh, uh, again, uh, you know, continuing uh, you know, along the same direction, uh, and perhaps this would be one of uh, the last point which I would like to discuss, is uh, about uh, you, know, you, know, you being, you, know, you are spending your time between uh, you know, Japan and India, you know, between, between Tokyo and Mumbai, practicing, teaching. So, Tell us more about no. You 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 would tend to compare. You would tend to compare uh, and 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 you know, try to figure out what are the similar uh, what are the similarities, what are the differences, you know, what are the peculiarities. You know? So, for example, you know, students uh, in in Japan, you know, versus students in India, or, or clients in Japan versus clients in India, or or, or, or say uh, contractors in India versus contractors in Japan. Uh, what what how do you straddle between this uh, you know, these two different sort of 
reality. Hmm. Uh, I remem- remember, sorry, the noise at the background. Um, I remember that, that you told me that, that you will ask that question uh, two, three days ago. Um, I haven't thought about it. Yeah. And then I, no, but I think, but, I think it's, it's more impromptu. I think I, I, I just want to kind of discuss it out. Mm. And I, I, I want, uh, no, probably it's not an opinion, but about an idea. Yeah. So, so, uh, I, 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 yeah. I, I don't expect a formed opinion, uh, Goto, no? because uh, sometimes uh, living in, in, in a moment does not allow you to uh, think uh, back. You cannot, you have to kind of zoom out. Mm-hmm. Perhaps you have to uh, go back to, go to a third space, perhaps mm-hmm. London or Italy to yeah. really think about it. So, okay. So I, I kind of, uh, when you started talking about my, this is my last question to ask Goto and then, I was, oh, oh my God, I didn't think about it. But it's uh, when you kind of elaborating the question to me, uh, I just remember that it's a few weeks ago, uh, one of my clients asked me that it's um, why you really came to India or, or what's your kind of motivation to kind of work away from your home? And then I was thinking, and then I, at that moment, I didn't have an answer. But I didn't share with the person my answer to the person who asked me, but it's, I have an answer to that one. And it's probably that it's the similar thing that it's, I can answer to you is that it's, I probably enjoy the being alone and then putting my, myself in the uncomfortable situation surrounded by the many unknown things. Mm-hmm. Mm. So unknown people, unknown situation, unknown culture. I don't say it's something that's the first time I encounter, but because I could also do, you know, the one block away from the, my home and then still I have no idea, you know, not something, I'm not seeking the new. Mm. New so- sounds like a, too much, like a, 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 I'm expecting something great. No, I don't need to expect you know, expect something great to come to me or encounter to the something great. But it's, I think it's important thing that it's, I, uh, I like to encounter something unknown. And that, that's, uh, I think, uh, motivation. So therefore, that it's setting the challenge is also always a similar kind of attitude. I explore something which I do not know before. Mm-hmm. So that's that's the uh, I think answer. And then why why I think so is also the way I perceive the public space mm-hmm. and the invitation to the individuals is I perceive like this. Public space is the way that that's individual being alone, surrounded by unknown person. Mm-hmm. So that's what I see in kind of seek. So you 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 have almost turned uh, uh, George Simmel uh, into it, you know, uh, or the other side of George Simmel, you know, living in uh, a modern metropolis, you no, know, uh, uh, alone but surrounded by people, uh, you know, uh, but in a very positive light. I think this is something which is very interesting, and perhaps you no, know, it's almost again like drawing, you know, which you kind of uh, talked about. You know, a way to explore. It's an exploratory uh, method. Um, yeah, but so um, I as uh, no, perhaps uh, you can join in right now. Uh, yeah, Sachin, I've been enjoying the conversation between you and Goto, and I think a lot of points that you you have raised about the drawing, about the uh, the idea of domesticity. And I think we could we could have this conversation going on over I think maybe a cup of coffee at Sept Canteen when Goto is back at Sept hopefully um, and that would be really nice to you know continue with this conversation. So I I think I uh, I what I really take away uh, there are a lot of things that we could actually discuss but I think it would be 
the time would sort of exceed so uh, i i would just like to sort of conclude here with that uh, as a practice it has been uh, what i find square lab as a very fascinating model of a practice you know that uh, uh, as a range of activities that you have been doing it's not just the practicing and making uh, 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 projects architecture projects interior design projects but also along with that there is this uh, workshops the fellowships that you do then along with that you are teaching and all these various activities allow you to explore this idea of domesticity and drawing in in different ways and uh, what i also really take away from this is that the, the way the drawing changes in each of this or the role of the drawing changes in practice versus the studio right and the documentation part is also something that one can or you know one can take away uh, from 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 your presentation so i think we sort of uh, 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 the, we need to conclude it here and uh, i let me let me thank first of all goto for for the wonderful presentation for sharing his valuable insights his practice his work it would it would be very nice to see you know i would love to see the kind of studios that you have been doing in 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 detail because i mean there were some slides that you talked about uh, some of the design processes but it would be fantastic to know because housing is something that really of interest to i think not just the three of us but many of us at except and also you talked about the the affordable housing and then how does the idea of domesticity uh, change compared to that ideal family or the one that we as architects used to normally design for so i think that is something that i would really want to know as 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 an academic you know studio what kind of explorations it have been doing a little bit more into the detail i think i think sometime so but thank you so much goto for for giving us your valuable time thank you so much for uh, giving <laughs> opportunity to talk it is a pleasure and uh, uh, sachin thank you so much and that you agreed to come for this interview and your unique insights have generated a lot of interesting discussions and thank you so much to for joining with us i think it is always a pleasure to uh, meet you guys and and always a pleasure to see exciting work of architecture so yeah. Yeah. it's been fantastic journey you know ever since we started this uh, live streaming interviews the we i personally got a lot of opportunity to talk to various kinds of uh, range of architect different people and know what what they think what they do in their practice in their research in their academy and i think it, this has been a fantastic journey for me i think so it's it's really enjoyable uh, these interviews i i really enjoy them talking to like a lot of architects like goto and you have been coming for the panelists a lot of architects have come uh, there is a lot of learning that one can you know take away from there so it's valuable so again thank you so much to both of you and i would just like to conclude here by thanking all the people who joined with us today on social media uh, and uh, we will be back i think with another interview next tuesday at the same time so i look forward to see you guys back uh, on this same day thank you so much for joining with us thank you bye bye <clears throat>